Hello, my name is Chris Lowe. I'm an ENT surgeon working in Tauranga, New Zealand. ENT stands for Ear, Nose and Throat. I'm a surgeon and I have been so for the last 15 years or more. So a typical day for me would be um, either seeing patients in the clinics or doing operations in the hospital theatres. Um, so I get to meet on average about seven or eight patients in half a day and if I have clinics both in morning and afternoon I could probably see around 15 to 20 people sometimes. So this is my um, private clinic. Uh, it's a very quiet um, and nice setting, very comfortable for patients when they come and see me here. My usual tools when I see a patient are uh, one of these. This is uh, what we call an oroscope or an otoscope. This is what I use to look into people's ears. And, uh, and if I want to look into their ears with a little bit more detail, I would use a microscope. And I've got a microscope right behind me. And, um, and if I want to look into someone's nose, uh, I can use an endoscopic uh, camera that would go up the nose to have a, a detailed look inside their nasal cavity. Some of the problems uh, can be resolved without having to have surgery and patients may just need advice or even medical treatment and things will settle down for them. But uh, in our specialty, most of the problems may require surgery and um, and then I will talk them through uh, a, the, the surgical procedure that is necessary for them. And, uh, and, I have, and I will take them through to another hospital to have an operation. So often ENT surgeons are also known as head and neck surgeons. And some ENT surgeons like myself, we uh, enjoy doing um, aesthetic surgery. And so we're often known as uh, facial plastic surgeons as well. So I, I work uh, in a secondary hospital as well, apart from my private clinics here. Yeah? And a uh, secondary uh, centre uh, consultant is quite different from a, a, what they call a tertiary hospital consultant. Tertiary hospital consultants tend to be uh, a little bit more specialised in a smaller area of the ear, nose and throat um, because there are a lot more volumes in, in a tertiary centre hospital which is usually based in a large city and uh, so for instance an ear, nose and throat surgeon would focus primarily on ears only or just a nose only or say just a head and neck cancer only so that's what a, the difference between a tertiary centre consultant uh, as opposed to a secondary hospital consultant like myself which which I would still do quite a lot more general things. So here we are, in, this is the operating theatre I normally work in. Um, in the operating theatre you've got to have enough space, it's quite spacious here. They've got good lights and, uh, and a very very good strong operating table where the patients would lie on. Um, in an operating, uh, operating theatre you will also find an anaesthetic uh, machine and that's the machine that uh, uh, my anaesthetist would um, put patients at ease and put them to sleep very very soundly and so they keep very still for the operation. So I, uh, at the age of uh, 17 or 18, I uh, went on to University of Dundee and that's where I uh, started my medical school. Um, it's one of the, it's a fantastic medical school and I've enjoyed all the, um, the activities uh, that they provided there in my Training. Approximately when I'm in my mid-20s, uh, I did my first job as an ENT junior doctor 
and I found that this uh, specialty uh, suited me um, in terms of the technical abilities. Uh, they tend to use a lot of gadgets and technology, and they they have to they have to utilize uh, very very innovative and clever ways of looking into areas where it's difficult. The type of surgery that is performed for ear, nose and throats tend to be very delicate type surgery, so it suited my, uh, my personality and my, my abilities. But more importantly, um, there was a, a group of ENT surgeons who kind of inspired me to, to get into this uh, specialty. So it's very important to have uh, uh, your interests, enthusiasm and having mentorship to, to kind of inspire you into, into doing something because that's going to be something you're going to be doing for the rest of your life. So getting into med, uh, a medical career is really exciting and, uh, but there are some, some of the things that you know if, if you don't have a, uh, an insight because you, you've not come from a medical background, um, you, you'll be quite surprised when once you get into it uh, there, are some of the, uh, some, there are some things that can be quite uh, difficult. Uh, for instance, um, you know, we work long hours and, and we have to be quite committed and we often have to sacrifice a lot of things to, to stay on course. Medical career can be quite a selfish career and you have to stay very focused. But um, what really keeps me going is uh, at the end of the day, when you see your patients being treated and they are very happy, grateful and thankful to you, um, that brings me a lot of joy. Um, sometimes I get the occasional letters uh, of compliment uh, and thanks. Yeah, these are the kind of things that keeps me going um, when I encounter some difficult challenges. Here we are in um, a part of Tauranga that's uh, close to my home. This is called the lakes because there's a lake behind me. Um, it's an awesome place uh, to relax and to, um, to unwind and you can even do activities like kayaking. I know what you're thinking. Um, surgeon, great lifestyle, um, living in a nice beautiful part of the country. Having it all, you know. Um, yes, we are reasonably uh, comfortable, uh, reasonably well paid, um, but that's not the only reason that you should be thinking of if you want to choose medicine. And uh, moving forward, if you intend to to go into medicine, you should think about your abilities to to demonstrate empathy. Uh, you should think about having some real insights as to what the job entails because that, those are the, the real attributes that will, will help you see you through your career and be very, very successful in your career.